Hello people of YouTube, my name is Robert and I'm here to review stuff. That's me! I actually toyed with the idea of doing the entire review in song, but then I realized how annoying that could be. Because this week I'm reviewing Les Miserables, or as some people call it, Less Miserables. This movie is the story of a man named Jean Valjean. He's been a slave for the past 18 years because he stole a loaf of bread to feed a starving child. And when he gets out, he can't find work or shelter because of his criminal record. But eventually he meets a bishop, and that causes him to adopt religion and a new name so that he can start fresh. But the prison guard Javert has nothing better to do than hunt this one single man to the end of the earth. Many years later, he's rich and he owns a factory. And inside that factory, a young woman named Fontaine gets fired because she has an illegitimate child. So that she can continue to support her child, she starts work as a prostitute. Don't be so judgmental. We've all done it. Eventually, Valjean stumbles across her, sick and dying in a gutter. And he takes her to a hospital, but he's too late. To make amends for the troubles that he caused, he decides that he's going to take in her daughter Cosette and raise her as his own. Later on, Cosette grows up and grows boobs and falls in love with a revolutionary right before the big war is about to start. Then the rest of the movie, blah 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 sad things. I couldn't call myself a fan of this movie, and only part of it is really my fault. I'm not a fan of the greater majority of musicals, especially the ones that feel like they have to sing everything. I don't need to watch musical small talk. One of the worst examples of that was when they jumped forward in time and they were showing all the people in France and they decided that the best way to introduce these people as sick, sad, and decrepit was to have them sing a song about how sick, sad, and decrepit they were. When in reality, all you really needed to do was pan over everybody, I could see how dirty and diseased they look. And I also wasn't at all surprised by the movie. Part of me thinks I've already seen this thing as a musical, but through the greater majority of the movie, you can probably guess what's gonna happen because you can just think of the most miserable thing that could happen and there it was. And would it have killed them to give us some kind of a heads up that this movie was going to be super depressing? My French is rusty. But I guess the ending of the movie was kind of happy. I guess not for Cosette, but in comparison to the rest of the movie, it was actually kind of happy. Of course, through the greater majority of the movie, I couldn't really even tell what was going on because they wouldn't stop singing. That leads us to another problem I had with this movie. Now, I think we all heard the bragging that came from this movie about how all the singers sang everything live on set and nothing was dubbed over later. It didn't seem to make the singing suffer because almost everyone in the movie had a really good voice. What it made suffer was the direction of the movie. My guess is that the director of the movie was so pleased with himself that he felt like the only thing he could do to do their singing justice is to have every song just be a single shot of the person who's singing's face. And who wants to watch a video when it's just a static shot of one person's face? YouTube videos don't count. You don't even really need a camera operator for most of it. You can just attach a camera to their belt buckle. Let them film themselves. And all of this just because you wanted to show off that everyone was singing live on set? I did like the greater majority of the performances in the movie. Uh, Hugh Jackman was not one of the ones that gave me trouble. Not only could the guy sing, but he did a really good job portraying Jean Valjean as he aged through the 20 years that this movie took place during. And I thought Anne Hathaway was going to be a bigger part of this movie. But actually she dies like in the first quarter of the movie. On the other hand, I would say that the best part of the movie is Anne Hathaway's performance of I Dreamed a Dream. I'm sure we all know what that looks like. But she delivered that song with a lot of passion and emotion. So I kind of feel like she deserved the greater majority of the praise that she got for it. If it hadn't been filmed so boring, I probably would have been brought to tears by it. I also didn't really see what everyone was complaining about with Russell Crowe in the movie. I didn't think he was a spectacular singer, but he wasn't awful. And I thought his performance in the movie was pretty good too. Because he was definitely the antagonist of the movie. Because he actually chases the hero of the movie all the way... Well, to, just to the end of the town because John Valjean never really seems to bother to get out of his jurisdiction. And he chases him over a span of 20 years. And it's not like you have to worry about him doing it again. He's rich now. He could buy all the breads. But on the other hand, I couldn't really judge Javert. Because dude's just super dedicated to his job. And on the third hand, Aren't there people that deserve your attention more? There were also some really dumb characters in this movie, but I don't really blame the actors for that. The first dumb person was Marius, played by Eddie Redmayne. Look, it's cool that you're in love with Cosette and everything, but it's not cool that you're so oblivious to the love that that Epinine chick has for you that you're gonna sing about how much you love Cosette right in front of her. Dick move, Redmayne, but I'll give you a pass because you rocked that Empty Chairs at Empty Tables song at the end of the movie. 
The next dumbest person is that little kid named Gavroach, played by Daniel Huddlestone. I know that they needed ammo and everything, but what the fuck was his motivation to crawl over that barrier and get his ass shot while he's singing a song about how dope he is? And one of the dumbest things in this movie is that Sasha Baron Cohen decided to do this movie instead of Django. I can't say that I hated Les Miserables, but I certainly didn't like it. I'm not a fan of dramas, I'm not a fan of melodramas, and I'm not a fan of musicals. So this movie had three strikes against it before it even got up to bat. And I don't really understand sports, but I think you have to go to the penalty box for that. I suppose the basic core of the movie would have worked for me if they just stopped singing so goddamn much and if the director would do anything other than just film their faces. That's my gig, baby. But some of the performances are definitely worth watching, so I feel like I say I recommend renting this movie. That's all for this week. Don't forget to like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel. As with last time, I'd like to take this time to review my favorite comment from my last video. Oh wait, at the time of recording this, nobody has actually commented on my video. Good work, guys. So leave me some comments this time and it'll make me less miserables. That is all for this week. Les Miserables, just been reviewed. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank me because none of y'all did shit.